my name is Kitchener Pan, better known as Kitch. First of all, uh, welcome to Turks and Caicos Jonkunu Museum. Here we highlight the history of Jonkunu in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Jonkunu is archived to have started here in 1859. 1859, this was just at the end of the emancipation period, at the end of slavery. What was done was the then freed slaves along with the natives of the island, you know, got together and wanted to celebrate the emancipation and, and their freedom. And what was done was, Jonkunu was the name concept for the celebration. Had two purposes. One was Jonk, because, you know, back in the 1800s, there, there were not much decorations and stuff for costuming. So, Whatever, basically, what you could put your hand on to create a concept of costume is what was used. Junk made new. Also, the celebration was also so named after a tribal leader. His name was John Canoe. John Canoe made junk new. The concept of costuming back in the 1800s was you had the newspaper or brown paper fringed at the edges, pasted onto the pants onto the shirt to create a concept of costume. Tissue paper was also used, and for those who didn't want to use that, they used the concept of the shredding of the shirts and the pants as used in the masking costumes to create a concept of costume. The coconut palms, the leaf from the coconut tree, you know, of course, that died and fell. The leaves stripped, plaited together to create straw. When it's plaited together, then it's sewn, in circles to create a concept of hats. So we had the straw hat, also a big part of the costuming, and which basically didn't cost any money because it was junk. Again, reuse, recycle, reinvent. The cardboard is the principle used for the making of costume. So the cardboard with some wire attached because what you to do for, for the purpose of strengthening and to give the, the cardboard the ability to flex make it do whatever you want it to do. The variation of the of pieces, all of the pieces that you see here, principally made from cardboard. Reuse, recycle, reinvent. This is cardboard. Cardboard attached some wire for strengthening to give it the ability to be able to flex and to do what you want it to do and to shape it how you want it to shape. This here is a front piece. This is the skirt. Again, cardboard wire attached for strengthening and to give it that flexibility and that bounce and durability. This is worn around the waist. So we have the skirt and then we have the front piece. This here, again, this is cardboard. Some wire, again, for strengthening. Attached to this here now, you see sequins and gems and glitter, some jewels. Again, this is cardboard, as you can see. Cardboard, glitter, gems, sequins, some feathers attached to this piece here. So we have the front piece, the skirt, the shoulder piece, and the head piece. Full costume, ready for the road. And then, of course, again, 1800s, there were no instruments, per se. So what was done was plastic bottles with pebbles on the inside or dried peas or broken glass, cans mashed at the opening to create a shaker used also to create some rhythm. For the drumming, what was used was paint cans, buckets. Attached, of course, to it would be the skin of the goat. Of course, you know that meat is eaten, nothing is thrown away, so the skin then soaked, shaven, stretched for tuning to the cans or to the buckets or to the drums to create drums. Also, to, to create a horn, what was used was the, the conch shell. The conch shell, of course, you know, the conch was taken out and eaten. The hole that was put into the shell to junk the conch out was then closed up, cut a mouthpiece onto the shell to create a horn. So basically, everything homemade, reuse, recycle, reinvent to create instruments 
and costumes. 1800s, we're talking about now. 1859. There are no instruments. So, what was done was, this is the skin of the goat. Goat skin attached to a paint can, so the skin is stretched and tuned and put on onto the can to create the concept of, of, of a drum. Then we have, again, a can, a bucket, variation in sound. This is the skin of the sheep, the, the sound of the, the sheep. Consequently, the sound of the skin is, is pretty much the same. Then we have, again, a bucket, in this case, a plastic bucket. Attached to that is the skin of the cow. Of course, you know, that cow skin is, that, that beef is eaten and skin stretched and pulled for tuning and stapled or screwed onto the bucket or barrel or drum, again, to create an instrument. The cow skin principally is used for the sound of bass. To create a little rhythm, dried peas, pebbles, inside of plastic bottles. To create some rhythm, so this is used as, as a shaker. You have this baby here, of course, used for the construction. When it's worn out its usefulness on the construction site and can't cut wood no more, you don't throw it away. You use it. To make music with. This piece here, this is the grater. The grater is just a flat piece of tin punched from the backside to get a projection on the outside. And this is used in the kitchen. But when it's not being used in the kitchen, we use it to make music with. This is a 55 gallon oil drum. Attached to this is the skin of the cow. You hear that? We have the sounds of our island. We call it rake and scrape or rip saw. Okay, two, three, go. Hey. Sounds of the island, everybody. Break and scrape. We Funk is the name of my band. We Funk, we've been performing nationwide. And what we've learned was at the end of our performances, the visitor would want to try on the costume, want to beat the drum, want to take pictures with their kids and their family, and also wanted to, to participate in the jump up uh, and in the, you know, the parading. So the museum, concept came about with the consideration of the visitors wanting to put on the costume and to dress up. So in order to make it a little more healthier and a little more meaningful, I opted to create the museum where they could come and put on the costumes, not sweaty costumes, and a choice of costume. They can choose whichever piece they wish to wear and put it on and take pictures with it, have a photogenic moment. We also uh, celebrate and share our musical history and background with them. And we allow them to, to play the instruments and to, to become, become a Jankunua and be a part of the celebration. I'd like to extend to everybody to come in and share and or let us share the experience of Junkanoo with you here at the Tux and Kegas Junkanoo Museum. We're located on number 18 Old Airport Road, downtown Provo. And I can guarantee you a time that you'll never regret. Here, you get to, as I mentioned, adorn yourselves in costumes. You, you choose whichever piece you wish. We have hundreds of costumes. You choose your piece, we dress you up, your instruments, you can play with us and we play with you. And uh, you have a full Junkanoo experience that lasts for a lifetime here at the Texan Caicos Junkanoo Museum. Two, three, go.